This is Mark Kellner with Higher Ground at the Washington Times, uh, speaking today at the National Religious Broadcasters Convention with Dr. Francisco Contreras, a medical doctor, and Daniel Kennedy, the chief executive officer of the Oasis of Hope, uh, you would say hospital, in Tijuana, Mexico. Um, one quick point, it's Tijuana, not Tijuana, Correct. as so many uh, people pronounce. Uh, and uh, doctor, you've said that the uh, hospital is observing its 60th anniversary. Is that correct? That is correct. We just celebrated last week. We had a great time um, with patients, the staff, uh, uh, members uh, of, of the first generation that helped my father build this up. And uh, so we praise God for that opportunity. Well, that's good to know. Now, tell me, what makes your hospital different uh, from the many hospitals here in the United States? Well, my father was the original uh, doctor who brought the idea to treat not just the patient, but to address the emotional and spiritual needs, especially of cancer patients. And that has made a tremendous difference in the outcomes and the results that we have uh, because we include faith tremendously into the treatment of cancer. But also, he introduced alternatives because in many cases, chemotherapy, radiation therapy, and surgery do not help the patient. patients. So uh, having alternatives is also a big part of our therapy. So we have an integrative approach to cancer, right. conventional and alternative, and a holistic approach where we uh, uh, provide resources not only to the physical needs of patients, but also to the emotional and spiritual needs. In a nutshell, that is what makes the Oasis of Hope very different from any other ecological center. And uh, what, what sort of results do you achieve? Well, we were able to publish a few years ago uh, five uh, uh, prospective clinical trials comparing our approach to conventional. And for instance, in cancer of the breast, stage four, five-year survival rate with conventional therapies is about 16%. 16, only 16 patients out of 100 survive to five years. With our therapies, it's 50%. And when patients come virgin to treatment, that is that they choose the, the, the Oasis of Hope as their first uh, uh, option, the survival rate is 75%. So our results have been much, much better better than just with conventional therapy. All right, now that's breast cancer. Are there other cancers where yes, you've had? Yes, we were able to uh, do the studies in ovarian, in lung, and in colon cancer. And okay. in all of them, our results are several times better than with conventional right. therapy. Tell me about the results in uh, colon cancer, especially for the virgin, as you call them, uh, patients. In, it, we did not have sufficient patients to do one with virgin right. as we had with the breast, but the uh, ones that came to us after failure to chemotherapy was twice as much. So 20% conventional, 40% with us. And now an interesting thing to note about those patients is that those were the patients that were sent home to die. Uh -huh. So in, uh, in America, those patients came to uh, the hospital's version to treat them. Right. And ours were the rejected ones. So that means that, you know, that success rate would have been much, much better if they would have come to us first. But unfortunately, you need a good number of patients to do a prospective trial. In breast cancer, there's many more patients right. and we were able to do that. Okay. What is holding people back, say, in this country, from doing uh, the kind of integrative and holistic approach that you're taking? The main thing is a lack of scientific studies. And why? Well, I don't know if you know this, but in order to get a drug approved by the FDA, the cost of doing the studies is about $800 million. And then you get a patent for your invention. And that's the way to make your money back. When you're doing studies with natural things, 
you still have to do the same studies, right? But you get no patent. You yeah, right. You can't uh, patent seeds or bark or uh, leaves or what have you. And that's why there are no studies. That's, that does not mean that they don't work. It just means that they didn't go through the process. But there's sufficient information preclinical of the value and potency of natural elements. And uh, uh, so without seeking for a patent, we have been able, little by little, to provide clinical information to the world. But we're a very small hospital, and we have not been able to, able to publish in the big peer-reviewed magazines and, and thus the information doesn't get out there until the patient hits the wall and then they start looking for alternatives. So unfortunately, most of the patients will look for alternatives until they have failed uh, with uh, uh, conventional therapies. One thing I would add to that is because people say, if it's so great, then why isn't it in the USA? And I would say 90% of what we do is available in the United States, but it's not coordinated. So a patient that is willing to go find a naturopathic doctor, find an oncologist, find a counselor, find a pa pastor, find a cooking teacher, find a physical therapist, and put it all together in their own program, they could replicate what we do. The problem is none of those specialists are working in concert. They don't know each other. They're not taking into consideration. So Dr. Contreras has a multidisciplinary staff of a psychologist, pastor, nutritionist, hematologist, oncologist, sur surgeon. They're all working together uh, in concert, and that really makes a difference. Okay, that's very good. Now, you mentioned the spiritual component. How important in treating your patients do you believe the spiritual component is, and what do you bring uh, to them in terms of spiritual resources? That's a that's an interesting question that the people that publish our, magaz our, our, our results in that magazine ask me, why are your results so much better? And I told them, we have an unfair advantage. Miracles. <laughs> and I, I truly believe, I'm convinced that the reason why our results are so much better is because people come to the conclusion that God is the answer. And so we... Uh, uh, a big part of our, our mission is ministry, where we minister spiritually to the patients. And, and, and why do I believe that there are so many miracles? The stronghold of cancer is fear, right? Fear of death, well, we all knew that we were going to die. The problem is when somebody gives you a date, and then if you don't know where you're going after you die, that puts a lot of fear. And even atheists at the time, of the truth that, man, I have cancer, I'm going to die, where am I going to go? And I truly believe that once most people acknowledge that spiritually they can resolve that issue of where they're going to end up, the fear goes away. And if the cancer does not have that stronghold anymore, it's like the cancer saying, man, it's no fun being in this person, I'm going to go someplace else. And the patients actually set themselves up for miracles. Uh, I, it's impossible to, to uh, uh, prove scientifically with data. Right. But our results are so much better that I have to acknowledge that God is making a big, big difference. Because we're good, but not that good. Um, is this a uh, question of a particular... Uh, brand of faith? Is this uh, something where you're preaching uh, Christianity uh, yes. to them? Okay. Openly. We, we believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for us right. and that he's our Savior. We we do not preclude patients from other religions to come, uh, but we're not going to hide what our mission is. But okay. we respect right. all faiths. Understood. Understood. I'm just wondering if this is attractive to, say, Jewish or Muslim patients uh, who have a different belief system, but may also have their own uh, answers about, you know, where they're going in the afterlife. Yes, we've had many Muslims, many Jewish people uh, 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 come through our treatment. Uh, and when they see that we respect them, they respect us. And 
they take advantage of anything that they want to take advantage in, you know, then they have their own right. We really do believe everybody has dignity and value, and it's not our mission to convert anyone from their religion, but it also, we're true to ourselves and we say, we are Christian. It's really wonderful to see people of other religions feeling so comfortable that they'll sit in on our devotions uh, regardless. Once I decided I would do my own clinical test to find out what would really help manage stress. And so we had nurses come and do like baseline blood pressure and such. We tried prayer, pretty successful. The most successful intervention was laughter. Mm -hmm. And what I love about that is that it doesn't matter what the religion is, right. we can all laugh together. Um, so we really do accommodate people of all belief systems. Right. Well, Norman Cousins uh, discovered uh, the therapeutic value of laughter, of laughter, what, 50, 60 years ago? Yes. My grandfather plugged into that and plugged it in, and he would bring a joke book. So he would do his sessions in the afternoon with his jokes, but he'd also then play his guitar. Uh, so to have your medical doctor gather around with you just to have tons of laughter and hugs, it was a really special thing, and we continue in that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is there anything about this that I might not have thought to ask that you'd like to ask? Well, um, no, I think you were very thorough. I think that the, the only thing that, that, that I would add is, or not add, just reinforce, is that we are an integrative Hospital. That is, we're not, we're not uh, a fighting conventional. We believe that the conventional uh, approach has value in some of the patients, but we also are open to alternatives that can be very, very helpful to patients. We okay. also start everything with nutrition to the point that we have rooftop gardens. So, how many hospitals do you go to that's growing the food as therapy? So it is from rooftop to table. Uh, I think that's important, and that's, we also equip our patients, difference. so we do cooking classes. We have a whole cooking kitchen for our patients to learn, and they can go out to the planter boxes and pick some cilantro and then fix it. So we're all about the education as well. We, we do art therapy, laughter therapy, so it's a healing experience more than a treatment.